In this Wrestle Talk news, Big E suffers a serious injury on SmackDown. Pete Dunne has his name changed on his main roster debut, or return. My review of SmackDown and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos because, huge announcement, Wrestle Talk is forcing me to have my name changed now as well. So long, Pete Quinnell. Now just call me much. Support WrestleTalk! Unfortunately, we start the news with a sad story today, as on last night's episode of SmackDown, Big E suffered a severe injury during the tag team match of E and Kingston versus Sheamus and Ridge Holland. While taking a belly-to-belly -belly on the outside from Ridge Holland, Big E landed directly on his head and was forced to be stretched out of the arena. A fan video from last night's show showed Big E giving a thumbs up to the crowd on his way out, seemingly indicating that he was okay. But unfortunately, the diagnosis for him seems to have come back worse than he was expecting. Taking to Twitter, Big E put out a video explaining the situation. I can't thank all of you beautiful people enough for all of your concern and your messages. It's very heartwarming. Uh, I can move all my digits. You see that? That's nice. That's always a good thing. Um, strength feels fine. But unfortunately, uh, right now, they tell me my neck is broken. So there's that. But uh, once again, thank you, everybody. I'm going to be all right. I'll be good. Don't worry. Go to sleep. Don't worry about all me, but uh, for real, thank you. And uh, I appreciate all of you, for real. It goes without saying, but Russell Talk would like to wish Big E a very speedy and successful recovery, and we can't wait to see you back in the ring once you're healed up. 2022 has not been the year for Big E so far, with losing the WWE Championship on the first day of the year, being unceremoniously shifted to SmackDown to start teaming with Kingston again, and now, this. Hope things turn around for you soon, E. But that wasn't the only major thing that happened on SmackDown, as Pete Dunne made his main roster debut, or return, I suppose, if you include that one time he wrestled Enzo Amore, but his name wasn't Pete Dunne anymore. Being introduced in a backstage stage segment and joining the team of Sheamus and Ridge Holland, Dunn was introduced not as the bruiserweight Pete Dunn, but instead as Butch, complete with his best chimney sweep cosplay. Commentary throughout the show would remind everyone that Butch used to go by another name, but now he's Butch, which is honestly one step above completely disregarding a wrestler's entire history in the company. But still though, Butch. I've gotten several tweets from people who said they were eagerly anticipating my outrage over the name change, and I'm sorry to disappoint people, but I just don't have the energy to care about it anymore. It's expected at this point. There was Dewdrop, and then there was Gunther, and now there's Butch. It's just what happens. It's a rite of passage. And you know, maybe this one will work and get over. It won't, but maybe it will. According to Fightful Select, though, it's not just fans who've been frustrated with this name change. As prior to the reveal of the new name, a report came out that said the name change was something that caused frustration by those backstage who had heard about it. Before we get into my review of SmackDown, it's been reported recently that William Regal may have been suffering some health conditions, which he was going to provide an update on when he joined Chris Jericho on his Talk Is Jericho podcast. This had caused concern among the online wrestling fans, and Regal had also mentioned in his Dynamite debut promo that his days were numbered. However, this appears to have been misinformation, as Regal clarified on Twitter already. That's why I stay out of the rumor mill and gossip. I've just found out that there's been things being printed about my health. I am healthier than I've been in many years. I talked this week to someone about things that had happened to me in 2018. Phew. And now it's time for my review of last night's Butch Smackdown in about five minutes. Thank you for being awesome, Pledge Hammers on Patreon, the British Bulldog Philip Boy J. Smith Jr., and Greg Taylor Soldier Spy. The show began with a lengthy recap of Reigns attacking Brock Lesnar at Madison Square Garden, and you can tell they're really proud of this angle, can't you? It was all they spoke about on Raw, and it played twice on this show as well. But Lesnar actually appeared on this show, which is nice, and he was a very serious cowboy. He said he doesn't care about WWE titles. Way to put over the match stipulation at WrestleMania, and says he wants Roman's blood. But instead, here comes Paul Heyman, who says that Roman Reigns isn't here tonight. Here's a general question I have about WWE. Whenever someone says, this wrestler isn't here tonight, I always just think, why? Why aren't they there? Have they been given the night off? Do they just pick and choose when to show up and no one actually books the show, it's only what the wrestlers choose to do? Anyway, Heyman says that Reigns isn't here to protect Brock. So Brock says, who's going to protect you, Heyman? And chases Heyman through the backstage area where Heyman gets into a waiting car and speeds off. This was the only furthering of the feud on this show, and it was not great. Lesnar's promo was good, aside from the throwing the title away and not caring about it thing, but I don't care about this feud any more than I did going into the show. Then we got the introduction of Butch backstage, who was aligned with Ridge Holland and Sheamus now, which at least makes some sort of continuity sense with Dunn and Holland's history together. Though Sheamus saying we all know him by a different name, but he knows him by his nickname Butch is just 
Chef's kiss levels of not acknowledging your past for no reason. What followed was the tag match of Kingston and Big E versus Shamsen Holland, which unfortunately saw Big E's awful injury. Aside from that, the match was fine, but relatively brief, and Butch distracted Kingston to allow Sheamus to win. After the match, Butch beat down Kingston some more, and this was all... Fine, I suppose. I hope you enjoyed that little bit of wrestling because we're not getting any more of it for a while. We got a recap of Owens calling out Stone Cold Steve Austin, then an ad break, and another recap of Owens calling out Stone Cold Steve Austin, Jesus Christ, WWE, then Stone Cold's response to Owens accepting his call out. What followed was a recap of Sami Zayn losing his Intercontinental title, Johnny Knoxville doxing Sami and putting his phone number on a banner and flying it off the back of a plane, Sami Zayn then cutting a promo about winning back the Intercontinental title, and then it's time for another match. Except it wasn't a match as it was supposed to be Drew McIntyre and the Viking Raiders versus Happy Corbin, Mad Cat Moss, and Jinder Mahal. But after Drew entered, the heels beat up the Raiders backstage, then came out to attack McIntyre, but McIntyre eventually stood tall, pointing his sword at the WrestleMania sign. The non-wrestling wrestling show continued with a recap of Ronda Rousey versus Sonya Deville, and then an in-ring promo segment with Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. Rousey mentioned that she'd been honing a new skill, an ankle lock in homage to her first mentor, Kurt Angle. Wait, can she do that? Can she mention him? Charlotte Flair interrupted and said Rousey's nothing more than a one-trick pony, before then immediately saying she has a new trick with an ankle lock, making her a two-trick pony, Charlotte. That's just math. Charlotte also said she won't be tapping out to Rousey, which Rousey said she already did. And she's right, you know? She did. Storytelling. Charlotte then walked away and said, uh-oh, a bunch. Please don't bring that back, Charlotte. We then got a recap of Lesnar and Heyman from the start of the show, and then it's time for an actual wrestling match. This one was Sasha Banks and Naomi versus Shayna Baszler and Natalia, and wait, no, first we need to do an ad for Toyota featuring Nakamura and Boogs, and then an ad break, and then we can have a match for three minutes. Banks and Naomi won, I have nothing else to say, this was a match. We then got a recap of Boogs and Nakamura being attacked by the Usos last week, and then a recap of the Usos beating the Viking Raiders last week too, before the Usos came out for a promo saying they don't have any WrestleMania opponents. But first, here's a recap of Lesnar and Reigns from Madison Square Garden. They're really proud of that angle. The Usos were interrupted by Boogs and Nakamura, with Boogs selling his attack from last week with bandages around his knee. Jimmy said that if Boogs can beat main event Jay Uso in a singles match right now, they can have a WrestleMania tag match. Boogs then immediately took off his bandages and revealed it was all a ruse, and then beat Jey Uso in two minutes, with Jey getting quite literally zero offense in at all. Remember main event Jey Uso? Remember when we were all excited for when he eventually split from Reigns because the story was one of the most compelling WWE has ever done? Eh, yeah, never mind. Jimmy smashed the guitar over Boogs' back, and there's your Mania program. This was... Fine, honestly, I've seen worse. We then got another recap of Ricochet winning the belt off Sammy last week, before we got the main event of Sami Zayn versus Ricochet. Except we didn't, because out comes Austin Theory just before the match begins, and sits at ringside next to Pat McAfee, and then decided to not sit there anymore, and instead he gets in Pat's face and then slapped him, which prompted a brawl between the two, and both of them being ejected, leaving Michael Cole to do solo commentary for the main event match. Crikey. After an ad break, of course. Ricochet and Zayn had a decent little match here, which was, of course, punctured in the middle by a full screen, moments ago recap of the McAfee and Theory brawl. Glad nothing important was happening in the match when that played. Ricochet won clean with a 630, which he got all of. That must have sucked to take. And isn't that nice? Ricochet winning clean in the main event of SmackDown. And here's a brawl between Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair. Flair stood tall, suplexing Ronda onto a car and choking her out. And that was that. Let us know what you thought of the show by voting on our poll and a poll match on our community tab. 78% of you voted for Get Well Soon Big E. This show was a whole lot of nothing. The Lesnar Reigns feud is progressing at a snail space, though not quite as slow as the McIntyre Corbin feud, which isn't quite as slow as the women's tag title feud, you get the picture. There wasn't much wrestling on this show, and when there was, it was mostly fine to good. I'm still uninterested in the vast majority of WrestleMania feuds, and this show did nothing to make me more excited for the most stupendous two-night, etc. This show gets a two out of five. There's no review of AEW Rampage today, as Tempest has taken some time off, so it's going to be me and SP3 doing the SmackDown and Rampage podcast review later today. And before you go, the draft day episode of mine and Luke's 2K22 My GM series went up yesterday, so give it a watch and tell us who you think ended up with a better roster. It's me. It has Tucker on it. You've got Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Randy Orton, Edge. Uh-huh. I'm basically Raw in 2003. <laughs> Checks out. Brock Lesnar, John Cena, Edge, Randy Orton, Bianca Belair, I've got all the biggest stars, mate. Yeah, he's got all the biggest stars. Still, Tucker.